Hello everyone. This time we're going to talk about vector addition. If you recall, a vector is any sort of a measured quantity that has both size, meaning a number, and there is a direction associated with it. Um, so we're talking about things like forces, velocity, acceleration. All of these things have a direction. Now when we add vectors, we have to take their direction into account. Let's go through a couple examples. For example, if I asked anybody on the street, what's 2 plus 2? What are they going to say? Well, 4, of course. It's always 4. 2 plus 2 is 4. It's one of those big rules of math everyone knows. But what if we start putting direction into the situation? Then let's look at it. Let's say this is a tug of war, and somebody pulls with 2 pounds of force in that direction and another 2 pounds of force in that direction. Well, what's the total? Well, the total is 4. But what if we switch things up? Because of the fact that vectors have direction, if somebody pulls in with 2 pounds of force to the left and somebody else pulls to the right with 2 pounds of force, what is the net or total force? Zero. You can actually have 2 plus 2 equals zero if you have or allow direction to come into play. Well, what if it's not in a straight line? What if we have a vector of 2 pounds of force pulling this way and another 2 pounds of force pulling that way? What's going to be the total of the two? Well, I don't know unless I know more information about this situation, more specifically the angles involved. So I do know if I'm going to add 2 plus 2 in the world of vectors, the answer is going to be somewhere between 2 and 0. But uh, beyond that, then, oops, I said that wrong. The answer is going to be between 4 and 0. Um, and exactly what it's going to be, it's all going to depend on direction. When we add vectors, there are a couple rules that we follow when adding vectors. And, and don't worry, there's only two rules. Um, rule number one says always add the vectors nose to tail. So I've got a vector here. And then when you draw the next vector, it goes the tail of the first is at the nose of the last. And then the second rule for adding vectors is you draw the resultant from the tail of the first to the nose of the last. That is the resultant. Now, that's a fancy $2 sciency word, and resultant means sum of vectors. And that's a word you should know because you're going to read it in a problem. Problems are going to say something like, these two vectors are added. What is the resultant? Which basically means the vector sum. So let's go through a problem. A motorboat is headed straight west across a river with a speed of 15 meters per second. There is a current in the river of 7 meters per second towards the south. What is the resultant velocity of the boat? All right, a picture is really, really helpful. And if you are ever, ever given directions like north, south, east, west, I'm going to encourage you to draw your pictures kind of like a map. North at the top, south at the bottom, east to the right, west to the left. Can you do it another way? Absolutely. But that's going to make it simpler if you always draw the pictures with the same orientation. So I have a river that is running from the north to the south. I have a little boat. There's a top view, aerial view of my little boat. And the boat is headed straight west across the river. So I'm going to draw a vector straight towards the west across the river at 15 meters per second. There's a current in the river towards the south. Now the current in the river is acting on the boat. And we'll talk about this further in the course, but we're going to make, we're going to pretend or we're going to do the math as if all of the forces or all the vectors act on an object in exactly the same point. So here I'm going to draw my southward vector towards the south of seven meters per second. And I want to know what is the resultant, which means I have to add the vectors. All right, how the heck do you add vectors? Well, right now, they are not nose to tail. They are tail to tail. So what you have to do is you have to pick one of the vectors up and move it so that it is, redraw it so that it is nose to tail. And then you draw the resultant from the tail of the first to the nose of the last. Now when you do this picking up and moving vectors, you want to keep the same exact size 
and the same directional orientation. One of the questions people ask me very often is, Mary, does it matter which vector I pick up and move? What if I, instead of picking up the 7 meters per second, I picked up the 15 meters per second? Well, let's do that and see what happens. If I pick up that 15 meter per second vector and keep the orientation and size and I move it down so it is now nose to tail with the 7, what I end up with is I have created a parallelogram and I have actually created a little rectangle here, and you will end up with exactly the same value for the resultant, and it will be pointing in exactly the same direction. So what I've actually made is a triangle, and I'm just over for cleanliness, because I've kind of gotten a little messy in my drawing. I'm going to redraw this. 7 meters per second south, 15 meters per second towards the west. Here is my resultant velocity. Now, this is a right angle. Here, how do I find the length of this? You bet, using Pythagorean's theorem. So I'm going to go 7 squared plus 15 squared equals square root. I get the resultant velocity is going to be, in this case, 16.6. .6, and whatever units are on these also is on the resultant, 16.6 .6 meters per second but this is a velocity, so direction comes into play. So I need to find a direction, and I am going to find that angle, theta. So this, I'm going to find this angle, and why this angle? Because that's from the origin, that's the most logical angle to find. This is going to be my adjacent side, this is my opposite side, and if I go so, ka, toa, I want something that has both adjacent and opposite. Well, this one has adjacent, that one has adjacent, and this one has opposite, so I'm going to use tangent. So the tangent of theta is my opposite over my adjacent, and that is going to be 7 divided by 15. And remember, when you do that, that's going to be the tangent. Then you have to hit second tangent or inverse tangent, in order to go back to the angle. So if I go 7 divided by 15, second tangent on my calculator, I get that theta is 25 degrees. Now you'd think I'm done, but I'm not quite done. Because in science you always want clear communication. So how do I say the, the actual resultant velocity while being clear about my communication? Well, it's going to be 16.6 .6 meters per second, but at what direction? It's not just 25, that's not its heading compared to north. It is going to be 25 degrees to the south of west. Okay? All right, let's go forward. Now, when we indicate the vector direction, we're going to spend a couple minutes on this, um, it is very often given compared to some cardinal direction, north, south, east, or west. So let's practice these. If I have this angle right here, it is, here is straight west, that's north. How am I going to say this? I'm going to say this 20 degrees north of west. All right, if you think you've got this, hit pause and try the next two. All right, let's go through this. This one's 48 degrees, so this is going to be 48 degrees west of south. And this one is going to be 66 degrees south of east. Make sense? Okay. Sometimes when you are navigating in airplanes or on a boat or orienteering or walking in the woods, um, you don't give directions as 28 degrees west of north. It's too cumbersome. So what pilots and boaters do is they actually use a compass heading. And in a compass, north is 0, east is 90, south is 180, west is 270. So let's see if we can translate this into some sort of a compass heading. 28 degrees west of north. So here's my north. 28 degrees, 10 28, so I'm about right here. This is 28 degrees. And how do I do this precisely? Well, north is 360 degrees minus 28 degrees. I just don't want to get this wrong, so I'm going to grab my calculator 
and that's going to end up being a heading of 332 degrees. Try this one. 60 degrees east of south. 60 degrees east of south. So here's my south. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. 60 degrees east of south is going to be a heading of 120 degrees. Now, if you look at this and you go, Mary, that sounds really confusing, this is why it gets confusing. If you are navigating out into the big world of, of navigation, um, north is 0 degrees, east is 90, south is 180, west is 270, and it goes back to 0 or 360. And the angles go in this direction. They go in a clockwise direction. Some of you have spent a lot more time in math class than you ever have wandering around the universe navigating with a compass. And in mathematics, this is 0, then it goes 90 up here, then 80, then 270, then 260, and this is in a counterclockwise direction. So I apologize for the entire universe, the fact that these are opposite and a little bit screwy, but you have to kind of keep your head together, um, whether you're talking about navigation or you're talking about graphical co coordinates in mathematics. All right, let's add another pair of vectors. Mo and Farley are moving a dresser. Mo pushes with a pushes south with a force of 70 pounds. Farley pushes east with a force of 100 pounds. What is the resultant force on the dresser? So if you've got it, try this, and then we'll go through it together. All right, here is my dresser, and I have got Mo pushing south with a force of 70 pounds. Well, south is down, 70 pounds south. Okay, 70 pounds south. Farley pushes east with a force of 100 pounds. So here's my dresser. Both forces act on the same dresser. That's why I'm going to put both vectors or originating from the same spot. Now to add vectors, I have to move them nose to tail. So I'm going to pick up the 70 and I'm going to move it over here. And remember, it doesn't matter which one you move because if I picked up the 100, I would end up at exactly the same spot. And then you draw the resultant, and the resultant is going to go from the tail of the first to the nose of the last. And I have to determine size and direction. So size is going to be Pythagoras, a squared, b squared. Square root is going to be c, and I'm going to do that with my calculator. 100 squared plus 70 squared equals square root. I get a resultant force of 122 pounds. And then I have to have direction. And I am going to choose this angle instead of this one down here. Why? Because that's the angle relative to the origin where I started. And that seems to make the most sense. So if I'm using that angle, this side is my adjacent. This side is not touching this angle. So this is my opposite. And I look at Sokotoa. So ka toa I want an equation that has adjacent in it. So that's going to be this one and this one, not that one. And I have opposite. So which one of these has both adjacent and opposite? Tangent. So tangent of theta is going to be opposite over adjacent. Opposite side is 70. Adjacent is 100. And remember, that is just the tangent. So I have to go second tangent. And I end up with an angle of 35 degrees. Now if this is 35 degrees, remember we're about clear communication. How do I say what direction the dresser is going to be moving? Well, north is here, east is here, so I have got 35 degrees south of east to the south from east. All right, folks. You will have some homework problems that have to do with all this. Best of luck with them, and we'll see you next time.